All right, guys, here we go. Do a little jam and keep E minor. It's just one chord in E minor. Uh, got that little jam chart up there. Uh, the different colors in the different key. Got E minor, you've got E, e minor Dornian, you've got um, E minor blues, we've got E minor seven, we've got E minor nine, all within this one little string, all these different colors. Also got um, E melodic minor and even E harmonic minor, which really covers the majority of the scales out there. Um, if, you, if you think of them all coming from a minor key, uh, it's, it's a really great way to, to organize it in your mind. There's all these modes and, and we all get really confused uh, by over intellectualizing things sometimes with modes. The, um, because a mode is just a chord based on a key. So E minor, you've got you know multiple chords in a, in a key. Usually you don't just play one chord in a song. So if you just think of one scale and then you have all the different chords that go within that song, um, you get all the modes. So everyone's always kind of playing different modes. Just whenever you shift chords in a song, it's just a different mode. So modal thinking doesn't have to be as complicated as it, as it, as it gets turned out to being. So here, here's an idea on how we can just jam. Here we go. So this is an E minor chord. I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna guitar first. Love the sound of this. And then later we'll show you guys the, the jam with the color. Color coded one here. Color coded fretboard, right? So the blues are blue notes. They're gonna be in the chord. E, G, B, D notes. Green ones are gonna be your uh, minor ninth or your minor eleventh. It's cool jazz sound, smooth jazz, or you can get this uh, pentatonic sound actually. Then this little red note on fret six, that's gonna be our blues note. We're gonna pass through that like it's fire, it's a lava. Always wanna go one note over from a lava and end up on an end note. We've got some of the spicier notes like in the Korean minor scale. the fretboard later. First we're going to jam. Alright. That's some really cool new technical things that I've learned from some great teachers. I went to this master class on Sunday with Amir John Haddad from Madrid. He showed me a lot of really cool things. I'm really excited to jam it out here today. Thanks again Amir. fingers has really improved thanks to some of the tips we got from here. Yeah. Trying to restrict myself just to the small string. 
driving guitar. That was a beautiful flamenco guitar. Let's try out this. Color-coded scale. Help us find out where we can play certain notes. So we got these really cool uh, little stickers. And the whole theory of the color is that certain colors, like Jimi Hendrix would say, he sees colors. Colors are kind of like different variations of the spectrum of tension. You could have a, a tense note that's, um, I would say it's more red or orange. And a green note is less tense. And then the blue note is like really in and it sounds super um, consonant and harmonious. So it's kind of like the a theoretical concept of harmony, but instead of using like all these really mathematical numbers and overly intellectualized um, names like sharps and flats, to use those, but to color code it, it's really good um, pattern recognition for the mind. It, it makes us more free to play. Sometimes we get too lost in thinking, it's, it's kind of confusing, um, and we don't get to be free to play from our hearts. So, let's do a free jam. So this is the smallest string, E string, over one chord E minor. Minor. That's my E string, small E string here. Got a position there. Now, if I play anything that's blue, so I have my finger off, I'm just gonna do that first E string open. That E sounds really consonant, it's really in. Right? It's a blue color, it's an in color. I hit all the blue notes, kind of like just playing a game or a video game basically. Third fret sounds really in to me. Seventh fret sounds really in. Twelfth. So we call an E minor triad, or the notes of the E minor chord, just playing it up a string. So you have any instrument, a piano, a zoo, anything, you play these notes, you're gonna be consonant in harmony, right? So the blues are E, the G, the B. This is all my YouTube channel. Um, search up Lava Guitar Games, Last Car Guitar. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. Um, yeah, check it out. So I'm just playing blues. It's not super exciting when you just hear blue notes because it's all consonants. There's no adventure, there's no excitement. So to get the more exciting notes, I like the color of colorful green. It always reminds me of Miles Davis. Um, Sharp, it's the green, beautiful green. It's kind of um, guys. We have the artists here. My kind of people. Let's try some of the different colors. So we play blue. Super and green. It's chill. To me, it's like chill, lo fi, hip hop, jazz. Soul, neo soul. So sweet. And this one note, it's kind of cool. It's right in the middle of the octave. So the octave is like this whole like, scale. So it starts on fret 0, ends on fret 12. And right in the middle is fret 6. So you cut um, 12 in half, you got 6. So the sixth fret right here, remember that, between five and seven, you got six fret. That's the blues note. It has a lot of history, it's really tense. Um, the super occidental Western European uh, philosophy of that was it was quite tense, they tried to avoid it. Or so the story goes. I think it's really cool. I think it's probably the coolest note. It, um, it's really tense. But in a cool way. Tons of great music is it. It's basically, we call it the blues note. And it's right beside two uh, color tones that I think are, are really consonant, really in. The blue is super in. <sighs> like water, totally chill out the fire, right? The green is like grass, it's cool. I wouldn't say it's totally resolved, but it's nice, I like it. The red, it's really fiery, it sounds tense on the ears, right? So if you 
like that spicy tense note, you know, you can play it. Oftentimes it's used as a note to kind of walk through, kind of like you would walk through the fire. Um, if you walk through fire quickly, you don't get burnt, right? The longer you stay on it, the spicier and more fiery it is. So I'm gonna play a blues scale. I'm gonna play all these notes, but when I hit that red note, I'm gonna walk through it. I'm not gonna stop on it. So that your ears don't hear the super spiciness of it. Just a little, a little pinch of spice by only staying on that red note for a little while. So here we go. So my blues and greens. Not super tense, it's just cool and chill. Now I'm that blues attention. So a lot of adventure. Resolve it when you get to that green one, eh? There's a saying that if you do something, it's nice to repeat it. Repetition legitimizes. So I did that one twice. I'm gonna try to walk from this note to that one, but I'm gonna walk quickly so I don't get hurt. I stayed on six for a while. The blues note, it really burns, but in a cool way, if you like the cool burnt sound. It's really just like an obstacle course. A lot of people get really lost because they look at a fretboard, they don't see these colors, right? Well, a lot of musicians, uh, they play long enough, they start to feel it and hear it by the ear. But you, you can really see it visually if you color code it. Just a few colors, blue, green, orange, red. That's how I see it. Um, let's try out some other colors. So up here on the nine. Ooh, it's kind of spicy, but I like it. It's the orange C sharp note. It'd be a raised, La. I forget how to say that so much. Different modes. You know, they have these names, all these fancy names. They're like Greek, Greek words like Dorian. Actually sounds like the doors. Jim Morrison and... Repeating things and there's a cool, cool sound. Just keep looping it. Even if I don't like it, I'll repeat it. Ooh, that's a spicy one. Okay, so this is the 11th fret. It's right before where we end here. This is what we call high do or the high E. So you got a high E and a low E. And if you think of an obstacle course, you would start here, and we would try to go through all these frets and land on, on fret 12. There's different games you could play where sometimes you would um, skip over that fire and not land on it too much. Sometimes you'd have this like special immunity where you could land on the fire and stay there for a long time if you like spice. These are the spicy ones. They're pretty tense. I like them though. I think they're fun. So you can make it as bland or as spicy as you want. But these colors kind of give you a bit of a, a tip. And you might notice there's some completely missing notes. Some of those notes clash really, really a lot with this E minor chord. So they would be like pure red, they'd be pure fire. We really probably don't want to play them. But you know what? Let's do it anyways. Let's hit some of those super fiery notes. This first fret, I got nothing there. I really want to try to avoid it usually, but let's hear what it sounds like. Oh, that sounds super out to me. One fret away from a chord tone is always the most out sound you can get, usually. It's kind of a physics thing because of the way sound waves clash. Um, they don't always sync up or they'll vibrate in a really tense way. Um, it's usually one fret away from a chord tone when you tense. Now this is our chord tone here, right? The blue one. 
I'm gonna hit this fret, which is supposed to be quite out too. Let's see how tense that sounds. To me, it sounds pretty out. But there's a trick. Victor Wooten talks about this a lot of the time. He says there's no wrong notes. Miles Davis talks about it too. Herbie Hancock, all these great players. They uh, mention that it doesn't really matter what note you play, it's just how you, how you get out of it, right? So if we find some of these tense notes, we're just gonna slide out of it and land on when it's in. So it's super advanced uh, jazz and classical technique called chromaticism. Chroma comes from the Latin word all the colors, like the rainbow. So with this one, I'm gonna show you the super chromatic jam. We're gonna walk through everything. But I'm gonna make sure that whenever I end my note, where I hold a long note, end, a phrase, or sentence, or riff, I'm gonna make sure that I end on a note that's, that's pretty smooth, like a green or a blue. So here we go. Starting on a blue, beginning my obstacle course. And I'm gonna walk through this tension. It's out. So I'm gonna finish it. Ah, that cooled it off. And we landed on the green. Cool on the blue. And I'm gonna be really careful to walk through this one because it's pretty tense. It wasn't so bad because we finished it on an end green. Oh, that's super out, but I like it. We'll end on the red. Blue. Okay, let's try some other tense ones. Really tense. <laughs> kind of cool, actually. This is an interesting note. Two frets away from the blue, so two frets away from any chord tone, is what guys here say. It's kind of like a colorful tension. It's not actually like super clashy. The most clashy, tense, dissonant ones are just one fret away from a blue. But if you're two frets away from a blue, for some reason it's chill. Like this green, it's two frets away from that one. It sounds pretty chill. This one's two frets away from this one. Sounds chill to me. Now this one's one fret away. I don't know, I kinda like it though, but it's tense, hey? And it, you relieve the tension whenever you land on the blue. Some old classical theory is usually that if you hit a note and there's a scale one fret beside it, usually you wanna resolve that by going to the next fret over. There's lots of cool little things you can figure out with just like a couple of colors, right? Just jam around, play around. The uh, National Library of Congress, I think, said there's like 8 billion combinations of music that could be copyrighted. It basically means that there's an infinite possibilities of rhythms and jams and chords and harmonies and, and combinations of, of copywritten music that you can make, which means that we probably never get to play every possible combination of music in our lifetimes, which makes it fun. It's like chess. It's so bad when I play that first rap, you know, bad in a cool way. Ended on the blue. So every note works, but it's kind of nice to know how to walk through because you want to relieve tension or keep tension depending, you know, on, on what you're, you're in, intending to do. One more time. We're going to hit every note starting on this low E, going on the high E. Fret zero to fret 12. Small E string, final challenge, let's go. E, open. F, fret one, that 
is tense. We'll leave it. Fret two, yeah. Fret three, blue, that's in. Fret four is gonna be really tense. Ah, the green is cool. Fret six is gonna be tense. Seven is in, yeah. This is tense. I think I kinda like that one. Go like this, finish on the blue. Ah, feels like we made it. It's like we walked through the fire, through all the hot coals, we landed on, started on the cool blue water, we ended on the cool block blue water. So in is blue, green is a little less in, orange is a little less in, and red is like super. This is on all the strings. You can combine chords, you can combine notes and scales. You can make, like, this is, it's like the theory of harmony, and, and harmony can be used in melodic ways, like singable ways, on backing chord accompaniment ways. It's really like a very foundational thing, but I'm trying to do it in a way where it's not so complicated, um, in a way where, where people can really grab onto it. Maybe, like, even a five year old could, like, like understand, hey, I got those colors, I can just jam those, right? I'm gonna do the in. It's like a board game or a video game. You know, uh, there's some books I got one couple behind there, it's forty thousand pages of charts. Sorry, forty thousand charts in, in the book. And it's, it's it, there's no there's no real pattern recognition, it's just very mathematical science like like astrophysics for, for musicians and um, it's really intimidating and, and hard to for, for most people to comprehend. This even helps me actually to, to color code it. Inspired by Jimi Hendrix and, and so many great musicians who talked about color theory and music being some patterns and colors and sounds and variation, very, um, variations of tension. So, there's the color wheel. Thanks for joining the Sunday Jam next time.